Hey guys, here is our video for chapter five and we are covering slides 10 to 16 on this video. You can download the slides on Moodle and you will also be using the worksheet that is posted on Moodle that is called Electrophilic Aromatic Substitutions. You might want to pause this video and download your worksheet and print it and have it ready to go and then fill it up as we move through the reactions um, that are in chapter five. I'm going to share my screen with you so we can go to the overheads so that you can see with me the um, concepts that we're going to be covering in this video. Basically, we're going to start by um, addressing section 5.3 in the book, which is electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. And in all the reactions that we're going to cover in this chapter, you will start with a benzene ring, which is what we call an aromatic ring, and you will take one of the hydrogens of that benzene ring, it doesn't matter which one, because all the hydrogens are equivalent, and you will replace it or substitute it with something else. Depending on what the something else is that you're substituting, you will get different reactions. For example, we have a reaction called halogenation. In the halogenation reaction, we take the hydrogen from the benzene ring and we substitute it with a halogen. We also have a nitration reaction in which we introduce a nitro group to the ring, a sulfonation reaction in which we create benzene sulfonic acids, a hydroxylation reaction, which is one in which we add an OH group. For the sake of time, I'm going to leave the hydroxylation reaction out. We're not going to consider this one for our third exam or our final. We also have alkylation and acylation reactions. So let me start with our first reaction, which is going to be the nitration reaction. This is what you need to copy to your worksheet. I'm showing you the nitration reaction with no mechanism here. So this is just the overall reaction. And as you can see, you will start with a benzene ring. You will add nitric acid to it in the presence of a sulfuric acid catalyst. And as a result of combining these two things, you will get nitrobenzene as your product. A good way to get to the nitrobenzene is to think of the nitric acid, which is HNO3, as two pieces, NO2 and OH. If you add all the components of this little structure that I have drawn here, you will see that it has the same number of everything as the nitric acid. So you have a hydrogen, which is this one. You have a nitrogen, which is this one. And then your three oxygens are divided into two oxygens on this side and an O8 oxygen on the hydroxyl side. If you draw your nitric acid like this, it's easy to see where the NO2 piece came from. This is the NO2 piece that attaches to the benzene ring. And the rest, which is water, came from combining this OH group here with the hydrogen that we have substituted in our benzene ring. If that's confusing, you might want to wait until the next slide where we're going to look at the mechanism or you may want to read this section in your book for clarification. You can also contact me at any time and we can set up a time to discuss these things. In this reaction, the sulfuric acid is a catalyst, which means you don't need to include it in the overall balance of the reaction and it will be recovered at the end of our reaction. The nitration reaction is the only one that has a mechanism that is going to be required for exam three and the final. So I want to show you that mechanism now, and that mechanism needs to be copied to your worksheet. Again, the worksheet is posted on Moodle. It's called Electrophilic Aromatic Substitution Reactions, and you can be filling it up along with this video. This is the mechanism for the aromatic nitration reaction, which is the one that I just showed you. When you combine nitric, <clears throat> excuse me, when you combine nitric and sulfuric acid, you create this ion right here, which is called the nitronium ion. The nitronium ion is going to act as the electrophile in our reaction. If you put benzene next to nitronium ions, the benzene ring will attack the nitrogen and will create a carbocation structure like the one that you can see here. 
And I know that's quite a complex structure, so if you need to pause this video and take a good look at it and figure out where all the different pieces are, this would be a good time to do that. Any remaining water that is in the medium will serve as a base to remove the hydrogen that we're substituting and to create the nitrobenzene, which is the final product that we're looking for. So this is your benzene ring, and this is an NO2, and that's what we call nitrobenzene. Let me go back there. Benzene ring, NO2, that's your nitrobenzene. Left over from that reaction, you're also going to have water, and that water is not necessary to be shown if you're drawing the reaction for me. I'm just showing you where all the little pieces went, but if you're drawing this in an exam, the only product that, that I am looking for is the organic product, which is the one that has the benzene ring. Again, lots of information here. One needs to get to your worksheet. We need to see this reaction, the nitration reaction with no mechanism. And we also need to have the mechanism available for the nitration reaction, including this part up here, which is how you create this very important nitronium ion. And then this part down here, up to the creation of the nitrobenzene component. For the rest of the reactions that are in this chapter, you will not need a mechanism. I will be covering those reactions next, and you can pause the video as needed so you can fill your worksheet. The next reaction is called bromination. You can also use chlorine instead, and then it's called chlorination. These are your halogenation reactions. The only halogenation reactions that work are the ones that use bromine or chlorine. Fluorine is explosive, as you know, and does not give you addition products, and iodine is too unreactive for this reaction to work. So the halogenation reaction of benzene that we are going to learn in this chapter only works with bromine and chlorine. Here is the, form, the general form that we're going to use for that reaction. Here's your benzene ring. We're going to add bromine to it, Br2. We're going to use an iron catalyst. This is called iron tribromide. And the product of that is going to be, we're going to keep our benzene ring and we're going to add a bromine to it. The other bromine combines with the hydrogen that is being substituted in the benzene ring to give you HBr. Super simple reaction, just add one bromine. If you want to do the reaction with chlorine, you will use Cl2 up here, and we will replace this bromine down here with chlorine as well. So chlorine or bromine both work for the halogenation of benzene rings. Notice that you keep your benzene ring as you go from one side to the other. Please make sure that this reaction is reflected in your worksheets for this chapter. The next reaction is the sulfonation reaction. In the sulfonation reaction, all you need to add is sulfuric acid, and you need to heat up your mixture. And as a result, you will add SO3H, which is what we call a benzene sulfonic acid, is the result of this reaction. This reaction is reversible, so if you don't remove the benzene sulfonic acid from the mixture, you will end up right where you started which is not where you want to be, okay? What needs to be in your worksheet about this reaction? You need to start with a benzene ring. You need to add concentrated sulfuric acid. This little triangle down here represents heating, and this is your product. And in case you're wondering if there's any other product here, you will produce a water molecule that explains where the rest of the sulfuric acid goes. Again, I'm only concerned about the organic product for all of these reactions. Let me know if you have any questions about the sulfonation reaction. The next reaction on your worksheet is called the friedel crafts alkylation reaction. In the alkylation reaction, you will take an alkyl group, which in this case is being indicated by this R. R could be any alkyl group. It could be methyl, it could be ethyl, it could be propyl. As you can see in this example down here, it could be isopropyl, it doesn't matter. You take your R group, you attach a chlorine to it, you use this catalyst, 
aluminum trichloride, which is called the Friedeland Crafts Catalyst, and your alkyl group will attach to your benzene ring. It's a very straightforward reaction, very useful. Down here, as you can see, we have used an isopropyl group. Here's the chlorine. And when we add the catalyst, the whole isopropyl group attaches to the benzene ring. The hydrogen that came out of the benzene ring combines with this chlorine to give you HCl on the other side. I'm going to open a Moodle homework so you can practice these reactions. And if you have any questions, I need you to let me know. The last reaction that we're going to cover in this video is the acylation of aromatic rings. Acylation means that we're going to create a ketone directly attached to the ring. You start with a benzene ring, you get the ketone piece that you would like to add to your ring and you attach a chlorine to it. That's called an acetyl chloride. And then you can take your Friedel and Crafts catalyst, aluminum trichloride, and that will cause this ketone piece to add to the benzene ring. The alkyl group that is attached to your ketone can be varied. You can use methyl, like I have used here, or you can use something bigger. Down here, I've put an isopropyl group next to your ketone. Any of them will work and will attach directly to your benzene ring. Now, I know that this is a lot of information and that you get, your head is probably spinning with all the things that we have discussed here today. The way to master this material is to print your worksheet and start copying your reactions on that worksheet one at a time. If you have questions, start by looking in the book first. If you don't have this chapter of the book, let me know. I will scan it and I'll send it to you. And the most important thing is that each and every one of these reactions is reflected on your worksheet. I will open a Moodle homework to practice these concepts, and I will send you an email that is going to have both the link to the video, the link to the worksheet, and the number of the Moodle homework that you need to be working on. If you have any questions at all, please reach out and let me know. I am available to meet with you at any time, whenever you need me. I will be posting the next video as soon as possible. Thank you guys.